Uh, yes, I was there to be on the right. I knew I made a mistake picking the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I am Anana Paparisis. I'm a third year student at the Greek Art Theatre, Carlos Kuhn. And uh, we got to work with Mr. Eliraz. I got to work with Mr. Kainer at the Analogio Festival last year, which was an absolute joy. And this year, with Mr. Eliraz as well. And that's all for now. <laughs> okay, hello. Uh, my name is Daphne Skumbalu. I've studied in London, uh, acting and performing arts. Um, well, in uh, London Metropolitan University, I did performing arts and uh, the Bridge Theatre Training Company, acting. And uh, I would like to thank Cece for selecting me to be here today. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Andreas Papadakos. Uh, um, I grew up in New York where I received my education. I'm an actor, director, and it's my second year of participating in this festival. And thank you for inviting me. My name is Matthias Gerd, I'm from Germany. I'm a theater director and the artistic director of the uh, Teatro Municipal, how do you call this? In municipal theater in Germany. I was, that's the older generation always reacts on that, but I was for a while the assistant of Peter Stein, which is a quite famous director. And I'm in theater since nearly 40 years now, so my whole life. I don't know anything else. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lar uh, Larissa Vergu. I'm also an actress uh, for quite some time now. Um, I'm always interested, though, in acting uh, in other languages. That's why I decided to take part in this masterclass, uh, because I also grew up abroad. I did school in Brussels. Uh, I'm half anyway. I'm half Czech. So I'm always interested in being able to act in other countries and languages. And it's my wish and goal. In general, acting, I think, takes us to the world. And that's my goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am an uh, empty chair. <laughs> 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 uh, I got in our Kissinger. I come from Tel Aviv. I'm a theater scholar from uh, Tel Aviv uh, University uh, Theater Department. Also an actor, director, translator, dramaturg, and uh, a husband of Ahuva. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a ma my main profession. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I'm Ahuva from Tel Aviv, actress, teacher, and uh, his little wife. <laughs> so uh, hi, I'm Evi. Evi Frauni, I studied acting here in Oziathinam and uh, Jorvis is one, uh, was one of my favorite teachers here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Jorvis Andridakis, I'm from here from Greece, I'm theater director and I'm also a professor here in this university and uh, I participated the, the, the previous year in Analogio, Analogio Festival with, uh, with uh, a quad of Beckett, with a small part of Beckett. Uh, it was an outdoor performance, uh, and so this is the reason that CC had the kindness to invite me again and to work with my graduate student, the students about this scene. Uh, we try to create um, not we don't we use only one uh, translate, uh, tra translation, but we try to make different versions in the level of the voice, in the energy, in the space, uh, different kind of directions. And uh, and actually we, we have worked with uh, one two more versions that we, we don't present. It. Today, but this is my way to create material and to embody the, the, the text. Uh, actually, for me, because it was only four days, it was a kind of lesson. With it's in progress. Uh, that's it. Hello, I'm Mirini Hormozi. 
from Greece. Um, we just graduated from this drama school of Athens Conservatory. And we want to thank Jorge <laughs> Samula for inviting um, us. I'm here. your favorite professor. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to work again with you. And she's your favorite student. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. All my sons. Yes. Well, uh, my name is uh, Leandros Polenakis. I am a theatrical critic and writer. She is the president of the Greek Association of Theater Critics. Um. The president. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's very modest. Yeah. <laughs> Maro. Okay, Maro. Maro. Uh, my name is Maro Kotska. I am a dramaturg and uh, a character critic, a member of the Greek Association. And uh, I am the executive director of the Hamalbergo Festival. Okay, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Konstantinas Kondali. And uh, I have studied drama here, Athens Conservatoire, and your voice is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> and lovely director. Just a moment. Hi from me also. First of all, uh, also Yorvis is my favorite teacher. <laughs> uh, I'm Dimitris, I'm Greek, and I just graduated from the Conservatory Greek Drama School. Also. I wish I had as many admirers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. My name is Yegil uh, Elivaz, and originally I'm from Israel, and the last seven years I've been living in the United States, in Massachusetts, where I teach at Amherst College as a professor in the theater and dance department. Okay, so everybody's introduced, we can start. The title of this event, I mean the entire event from the beginning of, the, of this morning, is Relocating Antigona, and it indicates its purpose. What happens to a stage conception of an ancient play that has been decontextualized from its natural habitation ground and relocated, like Medea, for instance, in a foreign country? Uh, a foreign language, and a foreign language is also entrenched in a foreign culture, associations, habits, or what Pierre Bourdieu uh, calls uh, habitus, um, and this means also socially shaped uh, mentality, body language, intonation, social structures, etc., etc. So this brings up several questions and I won't delve on that too long, because anyway, I want to give the, chair, uh, the, the, the right to speak to everybody. What is actually translation? Uh, is it an accurate transportation of lexis, of syn syntax, of rhythm, of rhyme, of meter, of style, of meaning, and so on? Uh, and I'll just take a little episode. Uh, at the uh, Habima Theater, the National Theater of Israel, where we made Medea about 10 years ago. We wanted to use, uh, the, the translator wanted to use, the Hebrew translator wanted to use a British um, uh, translation by, I think, Peter Schaefer, if, I, if I'm not, not mistaken. And uh, the British agency of Peter Schaefer demanded a royalties of for an adaptation. So we engage uh, a Greek scholar at Tel Aviv University, Nurit Yari, and we asked her, please compare the original with the translation. What she did, and she says this is a one-to-one -one accurate translation. And they said there's nothing, indeed the British said there's nothing like that. Even if it's accurate one-to-one, -one, it is an adaptation. Uh, so uh, this is brings up the question: What is a translation? Of course, on the one hand, as I said, this there is this very loyal translation. On the other hand, 
And translation can be uh, understood as an intercultural act, or even an intracultural act, as you did, taking ancient <coughs> Greek uh, play and translating it uh, um, again. So actually, it's a transportation not of text to text, but of context to context. Uh, this is one question. The other question is, what kind of text do I translate? Do I approach a translation of a classical text in a different <coughs> manner than the translation of a contemporary text? Or do I try to contemporize the classical text? Another question, what is the purpose of the translation and for whom is it intended? Is it intended for academic scholars like I think Jeb's uh, translation, which was not, I think, intended for performance, uh, for philologists, uh, philologists uh, for the broad reading uh, public, or is it intended for performance? And if so, where? before what kind of a public. So, uh, after all, these questions, is a good translation a loyal rendering of the original? And you know there is this old, and I'm, I apologize for the female part of this public, because there is an old, I don't know if it exists only in Hebrew, uh, there is an old proverb, proverb comparing a translation to a woman. Uh, if it is loyal, it is ugly, and if it is beautiful, it is disloyal. I hope that nobody. Yes. <laughs> I knew this would raise a storm. I don't identify. I just, I just could. <laughs> or is any translation actually a new work? A new work because. There is, um, I think, one, one of the uh, one uh, Israeli um, um, poet um, issued a book of translation of poetry translation, called it "A Kiss Through a Handkerchief," mm -hmm. and um, is it really a kiss through a handkerchief, or is it a different kiss and uh, umbir kiss? So. I am finished with my introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> each of you, whoever likes, from his or her unique viewpoint, how would you define a good translation of a classical dramatic work? What is a good translation? Does anybody have an idea? Um, if I may. Yeah. Um, because I translate myself. I think that a good translation, the translator has to know both languages um, as their primary language. So this way, if you're translating Greek into English, you know the English language extremely well, so you can choose and manipulate the words to <coughs> suit the Greek. So for me, a good translation is from someone who knows both languages extremely well, and is first in both languages. And is he allowed, as you say, is he allowed to introduce uh, new uh, forms or new... Uh, um, no, because then it, it shies away from a translation and becomes something else. For me. Okay. Yes, Some, somebody else wants to relate to this question. One, one of the problems, if we speak with this type of text, is that uh, in, uh, the, the ancient Greek language is very tired, it's very specifically Yes, and we have many, many other uh, words in English that you, you, can, you can explain the same thing. For me, uh, uh, from, uh, this is richness, of course, but uh, this creates also a big discussion uh, between director and and uh, the translator, because, uh, from my opinion, director have to explain exactly what kind of performance he had in mind, and to start to work with the translator before uh, <coughs> organize the performance, uh, and to explain what 
kind of performance uh, he would like to make and to be in, the, in, in a very, very uh, close cooperation and maybe uh, in the beginning of, of the work uh, to see what is um, easy for the actors, uh, what actors do you have? That means it's always a conversation uh, uh, between the... Actually, this, uh, this uh, chapter that... Now, uh, and yeah, and the last, this, this, uh, this uh, translation is a very loose translation. It, uh, I know that academics say it is not very accurate, but it's for actors it is beautiful. It flows, it is speechable, it is speakable, it is really vivid, yeah? And this brings me to the next question, which is directed to the actors here. And I have a small introduction to that. Yesterday... Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Um, I, I, I would like yeah. to go to that. Sorry. Um, well, basically, I choose these two. Um, I had three options. You sent me three options of three different uh, translations, and I was choosing the, the Jap uh, the, 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 the Johnson, which was quite as we know it, and the Jap translation. I read it and I didn't understand it. And I needed a dictionary, basically. Uh, and to prepare for the workshop, I really went word by because there were many words which I, I don't, just don't know, which I felt interesting. Which I, which I like to say, uh, this is the idea of the, of, of the workshop, to, to um, have big distance between the, between the different translations. For me, the question is, sorry, it's a bit of a different direction than that what you asked. Because you said you speak ancient Greek language. Is it needed to speak the original language? That is my question. Because I know, I know, for example, in Germany, when you when you want to direct a figure, then you get at least at least ten different translations the publishers they offer you, and I know that just a very very small minority of these translators speak ancient Greek, because these people they even translate Shakespeare and they and, and Moliere, etc., etc., etc. Most of even Peter Stein, who did a famous translation of Oresteia, does not really seriously speak Greek. He, he's, you know, he learned it in school uh, 100 years ago, so he has still, even me, I learned Greek, old Greek in school, but it's ages ago. Uh, so when I look into the, into the original, I still can maybe discover one or two words which I can connect to, but most of the translators, they do not. <coughs> speak the original language, which I'm, I'm and, 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 and the question is, is, is this needed? Because, and then I stop, Hölderlin, I don't know if anybody knows Friedrich Hölderlin, yes. he did the yes. most yes. famous yes. translation of Oedipus, yes. yes. mm -hmm. and he didn't speak serious Greek. Mm -hmm. In dance theater mostly, but I think just a small observation. I think that the issue here is like the whole time dilemma between subjectivity and objectivity, originality and intention. And for me, actually, the question that we are mostly moving is not the um, the choice between trans being um, <coughs> very fiel to the original or if I am adapting the original to my own needs as a director. Because I think, as you said before, um, every decision we are always obliged to choose as directors. It's mostly a political act. So I think it's also, um, we have to think that every translation is also an act of interpretation because we come with, um, with a theoretical framework and even when sometimes uh, we're not conscious of our choices, we're still choosing. So that's what I would like to say. Yes, please. Yes, um, there's one area we have to talk about in creating production, and that's the audience, who you are speaking to. And your choices also, have, you have to think about that very much. When I did Antigone, um, strangely, I did it in English, but I, used, I went to great version of Antigone, which is quite close to the original. Um, and in English, it came over very directly, and you really felt you were going back to the Greek, mm -hmm. the original Greek. It's a uh, really Brecht's, strong Brecht's, translation. Uh, Brecht is an adaptation. Yeah, well, it is an adaptation. Mm, it but, is an adaptation. Um, 
sorry, I'm not getting yeah, into the no. trap station adaptation. Yeah, I'm right. assuming we're putting things on stage for an audience and that we have to make choices as to who we are playing to as well. What you're saying is that it has the same immediacy yeah. with the audience yeah. as we presume the original did for the Greek audience. But could I just add one little thing which, uh, to what Matthias was saying? Um, the, ideally, uh, when you're reinventing from one language into another, you need to have a linguist and a poet. If you can't find those two people in one, um, exactly. then you have two. I mean, when I'm working exactly. from a language which I don't understand, um, I ask for a literal translation, and then I recreate that as if I was the original author writing in my own language for an audience. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's yes. interesting. Yes. 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 I just like to add in this, in Greece, in Greece, we have, let's say, about maybe 100 translations maybe more, okay? The, what is the difference? Everybody, the most of them, they know ancient Greek. The most of them, not all of them. The difference is if there is a poet behind and incorporation with the translator. This is my way, how, how I choose this translation uh, that I choose. I, I choose because it's for the simplicity, yeah. the beauty, yeah. and the poetry. Mm -hmm. And it's the same text, and here is a, for me, for my, for my aesthetic, here is poem, here is a poem that I, 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 I don't connect with this poem. You cannot that translate a poem literally. You have to become the poet uh, 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 to again. deliver. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Like this, I think this is the key point, is uh, for me, translator and the, and the poet at the same time in a conversation with, 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 uh, with the director. Uh, so this brings me to the question that I wanted to ask before. Uh, yesterday, I don't know who of you has been in the symposium. No, uh, you were for this. Yeah, you were for this. <laughs> I have been only, I've been only, I also worked for this and I've been only at the end. In the end, it was a very interesting um, uh, lecture by um, a Greek scholar called uh, Dr. Bios Liapis, whom you might know, and he spoke about a Canadian translation, which is the sister of uh, the, 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 the English translation that, uh, that uh, Yagil worked with, a, can a can uh, translation by a poet and scholar called Anne Carson. Uh, and, and, and he spoke about one, uh, let's say, uh, uh, faculty of her translation, which he called it a pal uh, palintext, which is a text, uh, a multi-hybrid text, which retains the whole voyage that Antigone, for instance, made from Antigone to Antigone to today because we didn't receive the text as a complete text. We received parts of it, and over the year it was completed, it was changed, and so on. And she made up a text which retains all these layers. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, and, uh, for instance, she told a very interesting story, which I didn't know, that one, one of the stations that this text or other Greek text made is they uh, they wrapped the um, uh, how do you call it the cloth uh, no no uh, the, uh, the papyrus they 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 wrapped the papyrus they wrapped the mummies with the papyrus of texts mm -hmm. so you f you found you found plays around mummies uh, which is rather <laughs> macabre <laughs> and very interesting <laughs> but uh, anyway and. Uh, uh, following that, I wanted to ask the actors, find it, do you find it more interesting to work with a text that is complex, poetic, has some layers, than a text that is fluid and sits on the tongue and you don't have any problems with it? Yes? I just wanted to comment on that because Yorgos just said, I've talked about the poetry in the text. And 
For me, finally, the most interesting part, working on two different, in English, first of all, not in Greek for once, but suddenly the text by Jeb, which is from the 19th century, uh, in, in the beginning it frightened me more, but I think at the end it was the one I enjoyed more, and because exactly it was more poetic, and um, finally we, on that text we put more movement also. Uh, that did, you find, did you find more layers of meaning in it, or is it just the, let's say, the poetry? That For me, it helped a lot that, yeah. of course, I can read the original text in Greek, mm -hmm. of course. So, because with the old text, I went in some parts to the Greek text but to see exactly reveal, what I'm saying. Did you reveal new things that you didn't find in the Greek? Yeah. Did he actually yes. open up? You so at some points, mm -hmm. yes, but also because uh, of the poetic um, elements, somehow I think it came much more strong, maybe, maybe, in how I delivered it, I think, I don't know, because I couldn't see it, but that's what I felt. Um, the modern text was also uh, very interesting, but finally I really enjoyed the Jeff text. Yes, somebody else. Um, well. and, and sorry, just to, uh, to end to end this, it was very interesting to do both mm -hmm. finally, mm -hmm. because I could feel the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, working with uh, Larissa and this wonderful man here. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to drink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as an artist, I believe that the, the most difficult text is the more interesting. Um, being a, a native speaker of English, I didn't really give much credence to the modern English because it's second nature to me. Where with the 19th century translation, I really had to concentrate and make it flow out of me like it's my natural language. So for me, it's the most complex for an actor, I think. Yeah, because there are two philosophies about, uh, among translators about the text. the text. The text that you don't feel it is a translation, mm -hmm. as if it is the original. Yes. Yes. And the other, the opposite philosophy is, no, you have to feel it is a translation. And you have to feel this what Brecht called this fandom, this estrangement, or so. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, please. I think that the whole uh, uh, problem begins because we confuse two different notions. Mm -hmm. uh, the one notion is mimesis, and the other is imitation. Mm -hmm. ah, so, yeah. uh, this is due to a, a major misunderstanding of the poetics of Aristotle, yes. mm -hmm. because uh, tragedy is not uh, a mimesis of the tragic action, because tragic action does not exist out of the tragedy. It is a, a tragic imitation of a semantic uh, act. So that uh, is that causes the problem because if we follow the second uh, conception, uh, it is a second-hand uh, imitation and not a mimesis. Yeah, that's very really interesting what you yeah. say. Yeah, that's something I studied from Auerbach <laughs> when I yeah. studied as a, <laughs> my BA. Yeah. I suppose uh, it is similar to an actor wearing a mask. You know, some productions you put the mask on and you have to elevate your performance and you're working under a kind of restriction, but you are maybe finding something extra on top of that. Well, um, so maybe Jeb, when you're doing Jeb, that is rather like wearing a historical mask, which um, uh, allows you to express it more strongly. And Jeb was, in fact, a friend, so I was attacking told me, uh, of George Eliot. So he, he was writing at a time when there was a strong uh, female voice already in literature um, putting new ideas forward. Yeah. Speaking about the female, uh, female voice, again, actors or some, any, any other, uh, did you feel that your, the translation you worked with uh, backed up more or <laughs> sided with oh. Creon? Or with yeah. Antigone, oh. uh, was there any? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, there was one interesting aspect of that that we discussed with Yadin, 
um, because so much of the way that they interact is on a public level, and in the last minute they uh, shift into a more private conversation, mm -hmm. the first thing that we thought about, that you did thought about, was who was more comfortable in each scenario. And when it comes to public speaking, Antigone is unnatural because she's curious, she's livid at everything that's been happening. And so when she takes when she takes this stand, she is fully prepared to take the people with her. And Creon is completely not her equal in that respect. He is far more comfortable addressing her in private and trying to reason with her or trying to explain to her what, what's been going on. Uh, when he tries to speak in public, he doesn't have her charisma, he doesn't have her conviction, he doesn't have her, uh, her sense of, uh, of right and wrong, because he is a politician and Antigone is not a politician, mm -hmm. which makes her, I think, much, that much more equipped to address the crowd as opposed to him, who is always hiding behind uh, his status and his uh, public uh, appeal. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, I don't know how many people have... Um, Oliver Tapman say that um, Nelson Mandela yeah. played crayon mm. in prison. Mm. Oh, really? In yeah. order to explore the nature of the power. Mm. 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 Yeah, there's another extra yeah. actress who would like to refer Tyra, to this. Another politician. Crayon is a tyrant. Exactly. Yes, he's a tyrant. So, uh, what. Uh, uh, the problem is uh, is not who is right or wrong. The problem is who has the guts to uh, take up uh, the crucial act. This is the real problem. Okay, this is a uh, controversy we had yesterday with the uh, who who has been yesterday in the performance of what group? How is it called the group? Ah. Yeah. of the artist theatre, which I was Yes. Who is Creon? Is he a tyrant or is he a person who is taking extreme measures in an emergency situation? The funny thing, uh, the funny yeah. thing is that even uh, the play has the name and uh, the, uh, the protagonist is Creon, and he only has only one, uh, one scene. Creon is from the beginning and he destroyed at the end. Uh, it's similar to Pantheus in the bad guy because his job is to exactly. uh, have, create law and order mm -hmm. in a city which has just been torn apart. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, and there's a, a speech early on where he's saying, the war is over, we are at peace, the sun is shining, what a piece of work is man. You know, all that, all that stuff is there. But there's just one problem, there's a body out there which has not been buried and someone's gonna bury it and that's against the law. And we've got to have the law. That's, that's his argument. And we have to feel for Queen. We have to actually place ourselves within his skin. Um, otherwise, it's, it's, uh, it's a walkover. Yeah, this is All the we talk about. It's, it's yeah. a discussion about democracy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yes, and I do think, just to add very briefly to what Mr. Polonakis was saying, that when we're talking about tyranny, the term itself has a history. We're not talking the way that we use the term tyrant. Mm -hmm. In a contemporary setting, is much different to the tyrant that, mm -hmm. that we refer to as Creon. Yes, the principle is the same. It is someone who decides without democratic process. Mm -hmm. But it is still a valid political standing back in the day, whereas nowadays a tyrant is someone that cannot possibly take power for himself. Tyrannos in the case. fifth century, they have the same... Not Tyrannos. Uh, no, uh, not they Tyrannos they not have the same Russian. Uh, what we, what we uh, mean by that is the same from the uh, people of the century. Yes, but yeah. it's a developing notion. It's not yeah. the same notion starting. Yeah. I think that it is but there the is another thing, a notion, I, 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 I'm a very small plasticist, something like Bomolochus or something like uh, another, uh, another definition of a ruler, Basileus. which is Basileus. Uh, or, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 we, we, yeah. Someone, someone who is from the tradition of from the dynasty, and someone who is not from the yeah. dynasty. Okay. okay. I would like to get back to the to the question of translators, uh, I, and this uh, refers to the work you did here, not to translation in general. Uh, the very fact that the German Israeli directors worked with Greek actors 
is in itself an act of translation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the fact that they were neither in Hebrew nor in German, I mean Hebrew once, uh, but uh, in nor in German, but they were in English. So we have a threefold yeah. translation act. Um, in what respect does this experience uh, differ from working? Uh, I'm speaking the, uh, the the actors now. In what respect does it differ from working with a Greek director? Uh, and um, and the other way around. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Zambulakis, uh, how does it feel to work on a text? in an ancient week, but you didn't work in ancient week, so this is, this is no, yeah, no, okay. So the first question is really, we have here multiple translations, so how does it work? Would you like Matthias to refer to it? Or uh, that means uh, meeting in the gray zone yeah. of misunderstandings. That's logic. That's, yeah. that's, you cannot avoid this, but you know this before. That means, you know, when we speak, not, not one of us speaks in his mother language, we, we all try to meet, meet somewhere in the middle uh, in, of, of so-called English, and then being confronted with a text which is translated into English, uh, which is etc., etc. It's a little gray zone where we meet, and it's, um, it's interesting. It is interesting. It's, it, what I enjoyed so much about this process is just, just to say this once is we come from very different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages, different experience with this play, which everybody is at least pretends to know, including me. <laughs> um, and we, after five minutes, we can start to work. And that is luxury in theater. Mm, that is exactly. what I feel it's absolute luxury. And I don't know if there's any other profession in the world where you can start from zero to to that level, uh, without knowing each other, I don't know your family name. I have it on the paper. I will forget it, but I know you know that. And, and it's because and we start, we start, and that is very, very interesting, and that is very unique in theater. And I love this a lot. And I have worked in different languages. I have even directed plays in Hebrew, which I, where I do not understand the word of Hebrew, and it's possible. It is possible. Yeah. Um, I did the Singhalese um, 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 first premiere of uh, Women of Sichuan in, in, in Sri Lanka without understanding one word. It's like directing an opera. And you did several uh, uh, versions of uh, Oedipus. Yes, yes. When we speak about translations, to come back to that, the first, trans the first production uh, uh, of Oedipus I did was my first in contact with, with the director on, on anti place and my, th my um, let's say my, my basic um, thesis was it's so far away from us we don't know who they, they are we don't know what fate is we don't know what the gods is we don't know what the cure is etc etc it has nothing to do with our daily life let's be honest it's a way so let's choose a translation which uh, which focus on this distance to say this is not as we are you know I have seen once a production of Oedipus on a mobile phone, and I said, you know, it's kind of directing, I don't like that. When we talk about Oedipus, we don't know really what that is. It's two and a half thousand years old material, so let's, let's, let's show the distance. And that's, for example, why I choose this, this translation of Hölderlin, which is the most difficult and most um, keeps the distance most to us by, by language, first of all, by language, in the German context. Um, uh, then we used uh, masks and platoon and the whole thing nearly killed us because it was really very, very, very <laughs> different. But this is, the, what I want to say is, it, it, it depends what you want to do with the play. What is this, what, is this a space like this? Is it a huge stage? Is it outside? Is it inside? Etc. This even is part of, uh, of arguments to decide this translation or that translation. It has very much to do with not only the audience, but the space, the distance, etc. And what do you want to do with the play? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say it's now, it's here, it's Antigone is here, I don't believe that, or do you say we look for something which is for us very strange, exciting, exotic, but away from our daily situations? Yes, please. Yeah. 
I, of course, I believe that there are I many. I'm not. I'm not a, a translator, uh, a, an academic person, or a director, and I don't have the experience or the knowledge to talk in academic way so much. But I think that uh, we all uh, feel or think things in tragedies that they are important. Not even. Uh, uh, not even you don't understand all the things in the logical way. I don't know if uh, we always have to make it try to understand. I don't think that always it's an understanding. Of course, the, the thing you say now, it's, uh, it's very important. Where, what, what is the purpose? We have to be aware of the purpose. I'm a translator. I'm not an academic person. As Yorgo said, I'm an, I'm a, an artist also. So as a translator, I have to make a goal. I have to have a, a purpose. Uh, do I have uh, to show the poetic side, to insist very much in the poetic side of the, of the play? Do I have to make a try for the episodes? I remember I was in the second uh, year in the drama school, in this drama school, and we had to work on Antigone with a teacher. So, I remember, there was, I love the Panagiotopoulos and also Volonakin's uh, translations uh, in Greek. And that's because there is a full strength of power, of beauty, of poetry. But, then, we had to make a try to insist to the relationship of Krem uh, and Antigone. So we chose Blanas, who was, we Another could one. see, we could Another read. One. Mm -hmm. Another translator. Another translator. We could see, we could feel that the purpose was to insist to the relationship of Krem and Antigone, and not to the poetic side. Also, I saw this summer uh, a Netherlands French production of Orestes and Elektra mm -hmm. of Ivo Van Gogh. Yeah, uh, the chorus part was not that strong. Mm -hmm. I, the language, I. I when the chorus was talking, I was looking the the subtitles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I didn't find the strength of the poet. I didn't find the strength of the um, philosophy feeling side of the play. But the Orestes and Electra power they had in the relationship was too strong. Maybe it had to go to a small closed black box or a, a different theater. But you always have to be. Flexible to feel and see which is the purpose of the artists, even if the name is translator, director, or actor. It's like a union. We have to embrace all each other and find a purpose of working. Where do we go? Yeah. Well, the last two years I teach Antigone at the educational program of the Las Caritas Foundation here in Athens. The director of the Las Caritas Foundation is here with us today. So, I teach students of uh, 17 years old who have Antigone in their school program. And uh, I see many, many, many students <laughs> I use many translators. I have all the texts translated in Greek from different translators. I have the ancient Greek text there, and depending of the school, I mean, uh, if the school has students, high-class students, mm. middle-class students, mm. but it depends, immigrants and so on, I present two translations and uh, they choose which one they like. They choose. The students of 16 years old they choose the translation, it's more close to them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's the first. Second one. This year, I prepared the opening ceremony at the Sarajevo Winter Festival, presenting 
a fragment of Antigone, the third Stasimon, yeah, with, uh, with the students of the Music Academy of Sarajevo, and uh, one Greek actor who had the role to, to receive the, the text in ancient Greek. You know, here in Greece, Greek actors can speak in ancient Greek mm. if need is. Mm. And they all know how to compare a translation if they have the ancient Greek, Greek, uh, the ancient Greek text and the modern Greek uh, translation side by side. Okay, well, in Sarajevo, the performance was held on the wall that overlook the city and it is almost destroyed from the civil war. Mm -hmm. There were about mm -hmm. 1,000 people, students, academics, uh, from all 1,000 people there. In the winter, it was cold, really cold, and at the end of the performance, they all said the famous verses from the third Stasimon. Mm -hmm. I was born to love and not to hate. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with what Leandros Polenakis stated before, that th that verses in modern times has an orthodox Christianity connotation, but <coughs> that's the evolution of the tragedy. I mean, in ancient Greek Athens, in the classic times, tragedy had one role, had one uh, educational, political, and so on uh, function. function. Mm. In modern times, tragedy does not belong, does not belong to, to Greeks anymore, or does not belong to Greeks it is universal. Uh, alone. alone. It is universal. Mm. It is universal. So, what we do today here, I think, it's what ancient Greeks used to do at the Herodian Theater under Parthenon, and what they used to do at all the religious uh, celebration they used to present us in Greek tragedy. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we forget that during all these rituals, <coughs> there are many étrangers, many strangers, many yes. people from other countries, from other cities, from other cities that they used to come in Athens. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of this workshop. That's the purpose of Analogio, to bring together people, to bring together needs, to bring together cultures, and to, and to underline cultural interfaces. And uh, telling that, I would like to propose to Jagil to give the permission to these two young people to come at the closing ceremony today and to perform just a piece of what they did today in front of us. Mm -hmm. 
Well, up to the actors. Yeah, the actors, if they agree. But yes, I, you are the first to give the permission. You. If you I don't would love give that. the permission, we don't go on. Thank you, I would love that. Okay. God will uh, present us one of her poems there. So he is invited and he takes part in the ceremony. And <laughs> Larissa will also present a Greek uh, text from Antigone, the, the, in modern Greek. She presents the third Stasimon in modern Greek. And another Greek actress, she presents the same text with Larissa in ancient Greek. So we have what we did here today in the closing ceremony, and maybe, maybe, that just an idea, a proposal, you could <coughs> to present the full production of Antigone and the festival I would be glad to collaborate. Mm -hmm. and to participate in a project like that. It's up to you, God. You are the supervisor of this workshop. It's up to you. Okay? okay. Thank you very much for these suggestions and <laughs> for this evening. Thank you. I have one final question. Just a final question, because we are speaking about translation. You can't finish uh, such a panel without referring to the translators here. Mm -hmm. And I'm referring to Zmarov, mm -hmm. where is she? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And our friend from the Netherlands and whoever else can say. Uh, how do you regard the translation of the I classic? Not translated. Uh, I read um, uh, Ursula's uh, play. I loved the play because um, it is, um, um, he, the play uh, speaks about uh, the strength of a young lady in the 19th century and uh, uh, she tries to, um, to defend uh, the, uh, his baby's father and um, for this reason I made the translation. Okay. So I, can I ask you, um, when you translate uh, an ancient Greek tragedy, what is your purpose? Whom do you address? What is your final purpose? Uh, That's a very difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, uh, I, I always feel two loyalties. The first loyalty is to uh, the actors who are going to speak the text. The second loyalty is towards the ancient text. Because I'm the one who is a mediator between the ancient text and the modern performance. Um, and this is uh, immediately a fight from the very first word. And it continues until the very last. Um, then it depends very much on what you want to render. When I try to translate it in tragedy, musicality is the utmost important thing for me. So I try to read the meters, I try to feel what it is to change. I mean, there's a, there's a part in Bakhai, uh, Bakhis. Uh, when the chorus enters, there's a, 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 a song, and the rhythm in the rhythm is going from, it, it's very changing. And for me, the most important thing is to find some way in Dutch to get the same kind of rhythm. And to get a feeling that words are not only words, but these words are words for dancing, mm -hmm. for choreography. So if I do not try to transpose that into Dutch, my director cannot work with it, in a way, at least, that he could if he had all these different meters. My composer has more material, if I'm able to give that, than just rendering the words as they are. Do your personal views, political, social, ethical, and so on, do they interpolate your uh, translation work? Uh, 
in this respect, that, uh, I, as a translator, I've often been involved in selecting the place that we are going to do. And the selection of, of the titles, yes, that's been very important for, for all the plays that we did. Um, during the translation, it's very difficult, at least for me, to think in, in political terms. Um, although I think you will, unconsciously, you will always do this. Um, but it's not, it's not the most important thing. Because this is something that, that, that comes out when you start working. I mean, the most difficult thing, maybe, for the translator is you can start working on text, you make an agreement with the director and everybody who's going to work with it, you finish your text, and then the rehearsal process starts. And during that process, many decisions are made that were not made when we started. Mm -hmm. So I can try to make a very musical translation, and then we decide in between we will have an American composer working with the Dutch text. And he says, well, I cannot work with the Dutch words, so please give me a minute translation. And then my work, it's, it's gone, in a way. I mean, it's not gone, but for that purpose, it's not there. But here we enter a different dimension, yeah. which is a chapter for itself. <laughs> I would like to thank everybody who participated in this panel and all of you who endured so long our, uh, this long morning. And we are we'll meet in the uh, in the at evening. At 8 o'clock, at the place okay. Megaron Musikis, House of Music, mm -hmm. for the closing ceremony, where every one will be presented. The workshops. Uh, the Brazilian performance, is it happening or is it not? Hmm? The performance by the Brazilian? Yes, yes, yes. It happens here. So well. it's after, after, after the, the lunch, after the lunch, there is a Brazilian here. performance here yeah. for whoever wants to assist. Good day. At four. Okay. Is that four, Smaroy, that shows? Yes. Yeah. And then at eight, at Megalon Musicis, and get you. We discuss and you come at Megalon with your actors before. And now we have a family photo all together. <laughs> <laughs> We have a family photo. You come with us. You come, Professor. 